Hi, my name is Sarah and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the SPSFC semi-finalists for Team Dragons in Space. We had three months to read these six books and now I'm going to talk about them. I'm doing this a little bit differently than I did last time for two reasons. Uh, last time I did one review for each book and that took forever <laughs> just to, to do the review, to edit them, to post them. I was just like, this is far too much. Uh, so I'm doing it all in one video this time and it was also because I didn't finish as many of these books as I was hoping to uh, for various reasons, which I will get into. I am going to just start off. <laughs> I was going to go in order of which I tried these books, but I'm just going to go in order that they're listed on the SPSFC website because I don't have time to figure out what order I read them in. <laughs> so the first book up would be The Audacity by Carmen Loop, which is the first book in the series. This one was definitely a comedy and had a lot of I Love Lucy references and I did not end up finishing this book just because it was not my style at all. Uh, I didn't really have any problems with it, like anything specifically. I didn't think the writing or the characters or anything was bad. It has, like, if I'm if I'm gonna read a comedy, it has to work for me, and this just wasn't my type of humor. So I was finding myself just struggling getting through it because it was a comedy. Uh, but it is about an alien who watches I Love Lucy and also I don't really know anything about I Love Lucy so those kind of references were lost on me. I have heard that it's quite similar to The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy which I also have not read or seen because I think it's a movie also. So I, it just wasn't for me. Uh, not to say it was bad in any way. The next book was Ex in Ex Machina by G.S. Jensen, and this was also the first book in the series. This was more of a kind of like cyberpunk futuristic uh, book, and I also did not end up finishing this one just because I read, I think, about 20% of the book, and I just realized I had like, none of it had stuck with me, so I didn't remember anything that I had read, and... I was just like, I don't really want to continue with this because obviously I don't remember anything. And yeah, it just also wasn't for me, unfortunately. It does say in the description that it is also artificial intelligence and first contact, which I think could be interesting. And I know that the main character kind of gets their, their brain wiped uh, at the beginning of the book and they kind of have to move on from that. But yeah, again, this one just wasn't for me. There was nothing bad with the writing or the characters that I can recall, but just not for me. The next one was The View from Infinity Beach by R.P.L. Johnson. This one is about a boy who goes to a space station kind of thing with his mother, and he's kind of getting used to this life and trying to make friends on the ship, and they, him and his friends kind of they don't discover it, but they end up going to this kind of asteroid that has been terraformed almost to be kind of like this paradise. And there's stuff that happens with that. I made it about halfway through this book and didn't end up finishing it ultimately because, I don't know, just some of the pacing I thought was not my favorite. I think that the idea of this kind of like terraformed area in space to try to like alleviate the pressures on earth to hold all people. I thought that was a really interesting idea, but I think just the direction it was going, I wasn't really into. I think there were some things that weren't drawn out as much as they should have been or that were kind of misleading in terms of the plot. I'm trying to be very vague about that because <laughs> I don't want to give away anything. Again, I don't think there were any issues with it. It definitely read a bit younger because the main character is, I believe, 15. So he is young, so it reads a bit younger. But I do think it was interesting in terms of the world that we are looking at in this book. The next two are actually kind of similar, but I had different feelings about them. The first one would be Tropical Punch by C.S. Jensen, which is the first book in the Bubbles in Space series. This one was kind of like a noir detective story, which isn't really my thing, so I did not end up finishing it. I 
thought it was fine but really like those kinds of stories just don't interest me so I found myself really struggling to get into it because that's not something I enjoy. It is- I did think it was cool that the main character is a cyborg I guess so I thought that was really interesting and definitely how that played in with the setting was really interesting but detective stories are just not for me. I have discovered that recently. <laughs> The next one was also a detective story and that would be The Clarity of Cold Steel by Kevin Wright. This is the only one that I felt uncomfortable reading. I believe it was in first person also. So the way that the main character was talking about other people just felt really uncomfortable and I didn't want to continue reading something where the main character was being so sexist and a little racist and just disrespectful so I ended up not finishing that one either. Okay, the last book <laughs> is Titan Hoppers by Rob J. Hayes, and I did finish this one. So this was the only book that I ended up finishing. Uh, I will get into like why I think that was after I talk about this book. So this is also the first book in a series. Did I say that already? I don't know. But it follows a young boy who his sister is a Titan Hopper. That means that she goes over to this big Titan, which is this big kind of spaceship thing I believe and she'll fight monsters and get resources over there but the beginning of the book so this is not a spoiler uh the titan kind of blows up and his sister dies in that explosion because she's over on the titan and the titans were really their main source of resources so I should say they're on a spaceship in a fleet of other spaceships which is like their community and so the this fleet is relying on the Titan for resources. So when this one blows up, they kind of have to just go somewhere else and see if they can find another one maybe uh, because they don't have any resources anymore. So like their source of food is gone, their source of water is gone. They can't repair their ships as well because all the technology that they needed to do that was on the Titan. So they're kind of stranded almost, but uh, there's a time skip and then they found another Titan I think five years later so they need to go explore this Titan and there are Titan hoppers which are you either are one or you're not one like there's like a test for if you are one or not because uh, you can like manifest those abilities so it's not like just anyone can just become a Titan hopper you have to have those abilities so our main character discovers that he's a Titan hopper so he starts training to go aboard this new Titan. So that's kind of the setup of the story. I thought this book was really interesting. Just the whole concept of, first of all, a fleet of ships and like the kind of politics within that fleet was interesting. The reliance on the Titans for their resources and also how they made up for not having all of those resources when they weren't near a Titan. I thought those were interesting world building things and also, it is kind of fantasy because these characters do have powers that they can use that they can kind of unlock as they're leveling up in a way. So they have those kind of like fantastical powers, but then it is very space opera, spaceship e. <laughs> so that part is definitely sci-fi. I thought the monsters that they could encounter in the Titan were super interesting and how different they could be was really cool and also just the mystery of the Titan because the characters don't really know and you also don't know like what these Titans are, how do they get here, all of that. So I thought all of that was really interesting. I did feel like it dragged a little bit. I think it is technically a progression sci-fi fantasy so basically they have to train and get more powerful and then they can go to the Titan and fight some stuff and then they have to go train and get more powerful and then they can fight more stuff. So it definitely felt kind of like repetitive but I did feel like you were discovering new things every time they did that and that kind of helped keep the story moving along. So yeah in general I definitely enjoyed this book and I thought it was really interesting and it had a lot of cool elements to me. So yeah. Those are my thoughts on the six books, which I only read one of. I think the reason that so many of these weren't really my style is because, especially in round one, we voted on which books we were going to read the whole book of. And so like in that we kind of got all of our tastes as a team 
to reflect what books we were going to go forward with, but in this case we were just given books that we had to read. So our team's taste wasn't really brought into that selection at all. So I think that is is probably why so many of these didn't work for me. No hard feelings against any of the books that I wasn't able to finish. I, they just weren't for me. And also this is only reflective of my opinion, not the opinion of my team. I don't think I said that in any of my other videos, but that's, anytime I'm talking about this, it's just my opinion, not my team's opinion. But yeah, I am definitely excited to see which books make it to the finals. They're probably going to be out by the time this video goes up, but I am super excited to see which ones make it. Uh, if it's any of these ones, it's a, if it's any of the three that we originally read for our team, I'm so excited. And yeah, I'm excited to read the other finalists. But yeah, I would love to know if you have any thoughts on these books. But other than that, that's it for me and I'll see you all next time. Bye!